All right, good morning, comrade subscribers. So today we'll continue. I just love these um, these DRAMs. They're gorgeous. So this is 64 kilobit, which is the standard Soviet DRAM of the time. So we've got 64Ks worth. So a mixture of, um, oh yes, okay. As I see it here, so mixture of uh, Slovakian or Czechoslovakian Tesla parts and some Polish parts. <laughs> That's a Polish part, I'm told. Plus, obviously, um, Soviet parts. Got those Soviet parts there. Uh, and obviously here as well with the big um, made in USSR labeling. So this is the expansion connector. So it's a bit dirty, so I'm going to give it a good wash. I'll uh, continue pulling the, I'll take the motherboard out. And you have to be careful because there are some quite delicate looking. This is the, uh, this is the, again, this is the ROM, ROM module there. Uh, da, da, da. So RGB, so apparently this is does have RGB pinout, but not necessarily is there an RGB image. So we'll just go for composite to start with. Clean the case and um, also pull the keyboard apart. So even though I lubricated that number one key, it's still not very happy. Yeah, that one's much better. So there might be some, I think, maybe some issue with the key switches anyway, which is not much I can do about. But, um, yeah, well, I'll see what I can do. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to give these, uh, might replace this. Looks like a tantalum, I assume. Looks a bit, looks a bit dodgy. So I'm going to replace that one as well. If I've got, was it 47 microfarads? If I've got a replacement, I'll replace it. Yeah. Okay, I'll get started. Okie dokie. So I removed removed all the chips that I could. And I'm just going to give it a quick wash. So I'm going to get rid of this um, Band-Aid sort of stuff. Very carefully from the modulator. And I might um, have a look inside, maybe. See if the top comes off. Will it come off? No, it's soldered on. Um, yeah, so some of these decoupling capacitors I'd probably maybe replace because they look a bit, I don't know, looking, looking a bit dodgy. Um, let's see, just to... Tidy it up a bit. This one's okay. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> not, um, especially there's no conformal coding on the on the traces either. So, got to be very careful of. See, that's very very close to to touching. So I'll probably. I'll probably double check all of these as well. I'll be very careful around this wiring here. So let's say, so this is video, UHF, and uh, power input. A little bit of a. Yeah. Actually, let's. Um, so, if I'm going to make a new ROM module, I'm going to have to um, check if I can get a connector. So, obviously, there is, there is this connector here, although that doesn't go. Yeah, that, that's for down here. Let me just grab some pin headers and see. Yeah, it looks like it might be a problem. I'm not going to cut it to size, but I did think maybe some of the external expansions were 2.54 mil. But this one, I don't know. It still might be 2.5 mil. 
So we just where's the single? Where did I put the single one? Put the single one away, have I? But I think even if the horizontal spacing wasn't a problem, the uh, the vertical spacing is a problem because it's just yeah, it's not not good, unfortunately. Um, so I'm gonna have to have a look around. Oh, look at this. Okay, so this is the keyboard connector here. <laughs> They've just chopped it off <laughs> to size. So they didn't have one that was that size, so they've just reused one and, and chopped it off. Here's the, as I said in part one. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, so I might have to, when I, when I uh, do my ROM module, I'm going to have to, uh, so this is the original, this is the original one. I'm going to have to probably uh, reuse this part here, desolder it from this board. Actually, we'll have a quick look at it while we're here. Well, here it is. That's what I was talking about. So this kind of looks like, although it's not long enough, it fits. Um, so it looks like you could almost make it fit. But again, problem is this this vertical separation there. So what's the part number? TX five two seven three zero one two V nine. TX five two seven three zero four three V four. So I don't know. TX five two seven three zero one one V eight. Okay, so it's a TX five two seven three zero at least. Okay. Anyway, I digress. Let's have a quick look at the at the ROM module. Just undo the screws. I'll be back. Screws are undone. Actually, another thing I was thinking of is is actually just replacing replacing this with a Western part, two point five four mil part because it's just wide up here so I could just remove this put in a standard part um, and then I just have a standard part. it means that the original wouldn't be able to fit on there anymore but the whole idea of doing the mega mega ROM module is that you don't need the original ROM module of course you can reuse this case here oh okay there's the ROMs so you put an 8255, so a programmable peripheral interface, which is pretty standard. And an MH75154, so I guess that's a 75LS154. Uh, da, da, da. So these are 1K ROMs, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9K. Very cool. So the replacement ROM Mega module that I'm um, basically copying, um, what they have done is um, I think the the ROM the, it just takes up this much space here, and in this section here they put a fan uh, because these machines do run quite hot. I think the the Dash Three, which is the final machine, runs a lot cooler than this one. This one runs cooler than the two. Um, because we've got uh, this section here, I believe, was all RAM, which ran quite hot. So this this 2A runs cooler than the 2, because we've gone to the 64K RAM here. Um, but then the 3 runs cooler than this one even. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to keep this. I'll probably give it a clean, give the board a clean. Well, I need to use this anyway, because um, if I'm going to boot it up, I need... I need something to start with. So, yeah, there we go. Cleaning continues. Okay, so it's late at night now. <laughs> everything's clean. Everything's washed. Everything's apart from the keyboard. Uh, so this is the ROM module. So this is what I'm trying to reproduce. Well, um, this is the form factor anyway. Um, yeah, so one thing... Well, what should we talk about? So I'm just going to... I've got to go down to Sydney tomorrow for night work, so 
It's um, so I'm going to be leaving early in the morning, so I can't start too late. Uh, what am I talking about? Okay, let, let's talk about what I noticed here. <laughs> um, so we've got um, this interesting chip right there <laughs> that looks like the um, the labeling has been done the wrong way around. The other interesting aspect is that the pins don't line up. You can see they've chopped off that middle pin there, or that third pin, and they've brought the fourth pin in to be the third pin. So that was a bit of an interesting bodge. That one, that's the um, that's the serial port, and that's the tape port, or is that the tape port and that's the serial port? Or did I just say the same thing? I can't remember. One's tape, one's serial. Anyway, so I just thought that was... That was an interesting observation. Interesting. And yeah, we've got some more Polish, uh, Polish um, semiconductors there and a made in Poland switch. That just seems to be connected to ground here, which then takes ground over to this chip here. So I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. Anyway, so this is the expansion. This is the expansion bus at the back um i'm not too happy with uh, well i think i think the resistor network's pretty cool but i'm not too happy with things like these i think i assume these are i'm not sure what these are are they diodes or something but you just see how the bare wires are just so close to to shorting out i don't know maybe once it's in the machine and it's not being touched it doesn't matter but uh, for me it's just eh, things like this as well you've got uh, i'm not don't mean to be rubbishing it, but I'm just saying, you know, I would probably change. Although, okay, they are they are actually connected together there, so it doesn't matter <laughs> what they touch. Anyway, so that's the expansion port at the back. Um, that plugs into the main board here. So that plugs into this main board here. Um by this connector at the bottom, which then has this intermediate, oh, little jumping, hello, little jumping spider. Off you go. Uh, which has this little intermediary, little adapter there, just to make it uh, make it reach. And this is the ROM, ROM interface. So that doesn't, that doesn't fit any Western parts. So I'm thinking replacing it. So this is a VIC-20, um, edge connector so obviously it's way too wide but I'm thinking that you know we could if I could get a smaller one with the correct pin out I could just replace it and on my on the ROM module that I'm um, redesigning not designing I am redrawing it um, have the equivalent I'll just put a edge create an edge connector here so that um, it'll plug in. What do you think? Maybe that maybe that's, that's a good idea. Or alternatively is um, try to recover this. Uh, try to recover this so that I can use it on my own board. Anyway, let's see. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Um, so this is apparently the pinout. So we've got 12 volts. Looking out on the side. So we've apparently got 12 volts, minus 5 volts, two lots of ground and plus 5 volts. So I'll wire up my meanwhile adapter to do that. And then apparently RGB, I don't know, it's supposed to have, it's got RGB pinout, but no one says it does RGB, so I don't know. Um, but this one's just basically got composite video and I assume that's sync and ground maybe anyway so it should be pretty easy to get composite video out once i get all the chips back in um well that's right i just wanted to measure so the keyboard the keyboard is a conundrum um just trying to think of a key switch that i could like key switch that i could use to create a new board um, 
So what's that? So it's about 15 mil. 15 mil? So key switches are about 15 mil square at the moment. And the actual key caps are... Blah, blah, blah. Well, they're about the same size. About 13 mil. 13 mil squared. So obviously the idea is keep the key caps, although... <laughs> Again, what am I going to find that's going to fit into that? Um, yeah, anyway, that's another another thing. Right, um, so that's where we're at. Um, so I'll probably tidy this board up a bit more. Um, some of these ceramics don't look too good. It's great that it's, it's socketed. And um, I just love these EEPROMs. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to redo the, the covers on the EEPROMs. And um, I just love the DRAMs. They're awesome. This is the basic, basic ROMs. Um, yeah, and we'll see if the machine works. So I don't think, I think I'm going to try a minimal configuration. So I'm not going to connect up the expansion bus to start with. I'm just going to have the main, the keyboard, and the... Um, Actually, you can boot it up without the ROM. Uh, it'll it'll boot into a monitor because obviously you've got ROM on here, so you don't need basic to boot it. So this and a keyboard is is the basics. So I'll try that probably maybe Friday when I when I get back home. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, let's see. Bye.